Hello everyone, I am Dweather Dude. Welcome back, and today we're going to be talking about a very stormy pattern that could take place across the central and especially eastern United States. Of course, we've been seeing the rounds of coastal storms slash nor'easters across the eastern part of the United States, lots of tidal flooding. And we're going to be talking about more storms on the horizon, but not just storms, maybe even snowstorms for some of you. Before I get started though, be sure to like and subscribe as well as have those notifications on so you do not miss a future video and we're just going to get right into it. But before we talk about the rounds of storms that we could be seeing, just keep an eye out, especially if you live in the northern half of the United States, be sure to look out for those northern lights. Um, if you did, you might have saw the article on the Weather Channel or AccuWeather. Um, so Saturday night, which is when I'm recording this tonight, um, on the northern half of the United States, anywhere north of this dotted black line, you could see the northern lights and trust me they are i mean i personally haven't seen them before but i've seen pictures and anyone who has knows that they are a very nice sight to see but just remember that of course weather will be playing a factor as always in these like whenever like we're talking about viewing northern lights or viewing like a solar eclipse or something like that um so anywhere that's shaded in that lightest shade of i guess you call it gray that's where poor conditions are going to be but let's say around dc baltimore you guys have fair conditions. Uh, Minneapolis, Denver, Kansas City, Chicago, you guys are all good. Seattle, of course, and Northern Idaho as well. And then that medium shade of gray is the fair viewing conditions. Basically, Denver and its western suburbs, fair viewing conditions, for example. All right, so again, be sure to look out for the northern lights. Hopefully, you guys, hopefully, you're under the fair or good viewing condition region because um, I definitely personally don't want to miss out on the uh, northern lights. All right, so let's get into it here. Um, I did have to zoom in a little bit. That's why it might be a little a little bit grainy, but you can definitely get the idea here. Uh, this is the PNA. We're talking about our oscillations, of course, and it, as you can see, it is on the positive trend, which means colder air will be filtering into the eastern United States, right? NAO, same thing, but except when it's negative is when we see that colder air coming in. So it's kind of like the opposite meaning. Uh, and then the AO, which is the Arctic oscillation, um, is below the zero line for next couple of days or next few days and then it may go back up to positive after that and then or maybe even come down again later on in november so uh we'll be watching those three oscillations of course let's get the climate prediction center view in here so across much of the eastern united states you guys have about a 50 to 60 percent chance of seeing below normal temperatures from november 4th to the 8th now remember the, the this does not mean that the darker shade you are the colder the air will be and same thing goes for the warm side it's not like the deeper shade in the world. It just means you have a higher confidence of seeing. Now that could be, like this could mean that we could see more cold air in this region, but that's not always in the meaning. All right, the real meaning behind this is that we're just, we just have a more likely chance to see that. So that's that 50 to 60% region. Then we got the 40, 50% region outside of there, and then 33 to 40 outside of there. And warmer than average conditions across the West, including Alaska, which is of course way off to the North and West. All right, so, Definitely set in a classic ridging in the west, troughing in the east sort of pattern. And precipitation across the east, or especially the eastern seaboard down to the southeast and even the Gulf Coast. Again, most areas in that 33 to 40 percent shading, but there are 40 to 50 percent shading as well on the southeast coast. Midwest, though, looks a bit drier, actually, for the 4th to the 8th of November. And then above average precip, as much as 50 to 60 percent chance across the west, western part of the United States. But that... We got to see that more precip come south a little bit because we know the west has just gotten drenched all of a sudden, right? This atmospheric river was absolutely crazy there in the past week or so. All right, now if we go a bit farther out in time, of course, we're going to get into the models like very soon. Um, just giving you the outlook from the Climate Prediction Center. Now, this is November 6th to the 12th. And again, that cooler air all the way even through middle November, potentially. Again, not every single day, more than likely, but uh, all in an overall spectrum. All right, that's 40 to 50 percent shading for the southeast, 33 to 40 percent chance. Um, uh, so leading below, all right, in the eastern and seaboard areas, and then over here to the central U.S. and the western U.S. Now you guys are also warm for the 6th to the 12th of November, and precip in that same time frame. Again, eastern seaboard could be on the wetter side. Southwest and south central could be a little bit drier. Midwest could be drier, and then the uh, Northwest can see some maybe above average uh, precip. Now this, I haven't, I know I showed this before. It might've been like last year, I forget when, but, but this is basically another map from the Climate Prediction Center. Just saying like your probability, um, they have this for temperature precip. Um, I think, yeah, temperature, 
uh, precip, snow, and wind. All right, so as you can see in this later blue shading, which encompasses this entire area, right? Uh, the Midwest, uh, parts of the Northeast, the Southeast, South Central, you guys have a slight risk of seeing much below normal temperatures, which is like a 20%. But there's also a moderate shading across the kind of like the Tennessee Valley, the Mid-Atlantic, uh, parts of the Ohio Valley, right? And in this area is where we have a moderate chance of seeing much below normal temperatures, so like a 40%, like on a moderate scale. Um, and it, it's saying on November 6th, right? And in that slight region, this entire area from November 6th to November 8th has a slight chance of seeing much below normal temperatures. So be on the lookout again on the east for some pretty cold air to settle in. Now, where does that tie into the snowstorms? Well, as you saw on the Climate Prediction Center map, right? Below normal temperatures plus above average precipitation, especially this time of year and in the next few months, could mean some snow. And we're going to be looking at that. So let's look at the three models. We have GFS, Canadian, and the European here today. Uh, GFS model here, as we time this out, sure enough, there's Tuesday afternoon. You can see the cold air really coming in uh, to the central and the eastern United States. Some areas in those purple shadings could be 10 plus degrees uh, below average here at the surface. And that cold air sticks around like a lot, right? And even look at on the near Kentucky, Tennessee, the Appalachian chain, even in West Virginia and Virginia. This is like afternoon on Thursday, all right? And we're talking about 10 to 15 degrees below average, which is very significant for this time of year. And notice that cold air sticks. I mean, and we have another fresh um, plunge of cold air coming in. This is the morning of November 10th, all right? So you can see colder air in the mid northern mid-Atlantic and northeast while the south still stays warm. All right, and you can see as we keep going, maybe warm air might finally kick in by the middle of November. But until then, for the next couple of weeks, it looks like we're going to be on the colder side, especially in the central and eastern United States. Here, we have a pretty strong low pressure, not as strong as the ones we've seen, but a still a decently sized low pressure that's bringing in onshore flow. I mean, and due to the strong winds aloft, we saw wind gusts close to 70 miles an hour on the mid-Atlantic shores uh, yesterday. And of course, we just had a nor'easter before that as well. So uh, it's producing some rain, also a lot of wind. So that's going to kick itself out. But then look what happens. Now the GFS, um, I'm not going to spoil it, what the other two models are going to say for this. But the GFS model is definitely putting something out there. So here's the high pressure. That could help to bring some colder air into the eastern United States. We have that cold air coming from the north and Canada flow. Now, the, these blue lines, all right, I know... Different people might have different meanings for these blue lines. So the 540, some people does say is your rain snow line. It's true, but not true. Because some people make it sound like, well, if you're above that 540 line, like to the north of it, that means you could see snow. And I would say the 540 line means conditions are, conditions are starting to line up for snow. Just because you're above the 540 line doesn't mean you're really in for snow. Because look, look for example, around the Great Lakes areas, right? Look at all these areas of rain, and yet they're above the 534 line. Like the lower the number, the quote unquote colder the air is supposed to be. There's different maps for that. But for this map, I would say if you're above the 540 line, you have cold air that could potentially be favorable for snow or rain snow mix, but not always. All right. And that shows here. Because look at the 540 line, it kind of extends into northern mid Atlantic, and we still have rain in this area and the snow in the higher elevations of West Virginia and Virginia. All right, so this we could see a, a storm here is in the first few days in November. So, and again, once it moves out of the higher elevations, of course, the coastline sticks to just rain. But that's not to say it won't still be cold. It will still be cold, and colder air, maybe even colder than that, will come in behind it. All right, so we're gonna kind of be we're gonna be looking like midterm. I don't know about long term, but maybe midterm. All right, over the next couple of weeks, and then another low pressure moves out this way. We can see some lake effect snow across the interior northeast. Right, then we have like a sort of a clipper system. You can see the blue coming in across North Dakota, Minnesota. We're going to see some snow. And then it kind of evolves into like a big storm system, like 990 millibars of pressure right there. All right, and it's got cold air on the front side of it and then rain on the back side of it. That's kind of like a warm front set up here where you got like the warm front here. You got the snow to the north of it and the rain behind it. Uh, that looks the type of setup for this system. And you can see, look at the rain-snow mix. Look how it gets into Michigan, Ohio, Pennsylvania, maybe even some of the lower elevations. All right. Then it moves its way to the north where we sort of got cold front here, warm front here. You can see snow up in this region potentially. And you got the warm sector in here. All right. And then you got the very cold air and, and wind as well behind that. So again, today we're going to be focusing on the central and eastern United States. And then there's a 
And then that low kind of moves up to the north. And even some snow in the northern, in the northern part of Minnesota here. And maybe another snowstorm coming in behind that. So it is going to be very stormy for both the central and maybe even the eastern United States. And that definitely shows here. I mean, look at the snowfall totals, right? For West Virginia and Virginia, that first storm I was telling you guys about, potentially four to seven inches, right? Over in North Dakota, Minnesota, maybe even one to two plus feet of snow is what they're calling for. That does include uh, sleet and ice, though. Do keep that in mind. Um, but even so, like, look at northern New England, could even see some patchy areas in the higher elevation, six to 12 inches plus. All right, like... This is a lot, like this map, like all these areas here, you do have the chance to see snow. And some some of those areas, like, I mean, even snow is forecast an inch or two for Chicago. All right, so these, these do include lower elevations, right? A couple inches maybe for Detroit, maybe a few inches for Ann Arbor, maybe even a couple inches for Cleveland. All right, so definitely keep in mind that snow could be on the way because November, I mean, it, and I do have, I could pull up in another video, but I definitely have maps of like, what does a weak La Nina look like for certain months? From what I saw from the data that I gathered, October can be pretty warm during a weak La Nina, and that definitely was seen, October was warm. But then it says across the central and east US especially, that November can turn colder. And precipitation wise, it's kind of like back and forth, sometimes drier, sometimes wetter. Um, but overall though, cold air in November, and that's definitely what we're seeing. As soon as we flip the switch in November, I mean, we're going to, and over the next few days, the cold air is going to start coming in. It's not quite here yet for some, but it will be here soon. All right. Now we're going to go through that again with the Canadian models to see what they're showing. Now, look at the colder air that they literally have dominating here over the um, these northern and central United States. I actually am going to pull up this to see, like, look at the temperatures here. This is Tuesday morning on November 2nd. We're talking about lower teens. All right. And even, like, look at that, two degrees. And um, that, that is a higher elevation spot slightly, but that is in Eastern Col or Wyoming, excuse me, two degrees and even lower elevations in the lower to mid teens. All right. Tuesday morning. So this is like frigid, frigid air. All right. And this is kind of air that's typical in the wintertime. But of course, it's going to be coming in here in November. And I mean, look at this. All right. Now we see the cold air coming in. This is Wednesday morning. This is the next morning. Look at all the magentas here. We're talking about 12 to 20 degrees plus below average. And that gets all trouble for November, all right? Uh, let's go to 108, all right? Here we go. Teens getting down in the Iowa. 20s getting down into, like, Kansas, Missouri, Kentucky, Tennessee, Ohio, all right? Are all getting into the 20s, all right? Even Tennessee, Pennsylvania, the Appalachian chain are all getting below freezing, all right? As far south as even Nashville. So this is a very, very cold uh, spell that's going to be coming across here. Um, and if it does get over the Great Lakes areas, I know the lakes are slightly warm right now. So, of course, if you're closer to the coastline, you can see in western Michigan, eastern Michigan, right, along the coast of Lake Erie, you guys are still above freezing because of the warm lakes. Warm lakes do keep you a little bit warmer, but they're also it's also going to spell snow if enough moisture moves across there. All right. So, again, take away from the Canadian here, very, very cold air. And look at Thursday morning across the... Now it's, I mean, even the purples and magentas are spreading to the Midwest and the Mid-Atlantic, right? If we look at the temperature graph for this, right? Now we're talking about even areas on the eastern seaboard getting two or even below freezing, all right? In the, in the morning, of course, in the very, like, early morning, the coldest part. But still, that's still cold. That's typically not quite, that's more so normal for mid-November at November time frame, all right? So again, teens across the northern part of the country. Now, now, for precipitation-wise, again, there's that low, uh, that powerful low that's going to make its way off the eastern seaboard. Um, they do have some lake effect rain and snow showers up there. But overall, they keep it a little bit quieter with the uh, precipitation. All right, Of course, except for those lake effect snow flurries and rain showers. So Canadian, and, and do keep in mind, a Canadian also only goes out 10 days, whereas the GFS goes out 16 days. So do, do keep that in mind. But you can see the blue lines, right? So these do kind of correspond to colder air. It's just that isn't favorable for snow. Uh, but you can see the colder air definitely encompassed in that area. Got the perfect high pressure here. It's going to bring the cold air down. I can't really say this is like a perfect crisp fall chill. Maybe for you guys in the southeast, yeah. But for people in the north where it's going to be getting the freezing and below freezing and below 20s, that's not a crisp fall chill. That's just downright frigid. Um, now, some snow is possible for Nebraska and Kansas. Four to eight inches. For you guys there across the lakes, you can see a few inches over the next 10 days through the first nine or 10 days in November. But now we're going to move on to the European model. All right. 
Now, I did say there's going to be something interesting, and if it didn't happen in the other two models, you know that it's the European. So, spoiler alert, it is the European model that does show something very interesting. Um, colder air. Now, typically, they're not as bullish with the temperature like anomalies. They like to keep it on the you know moderate side. But even the European, I mean, 10 to 20 degrees below average across the Ohio Valley Wednesday morning. So, you better believe all models agree it's going to be cold. All right. I mean, even look at this. This is the... Uh, from Mississippi all the way up to like the Appalachians in West Virginia, we're talking about t over 20 degrees below average Fahrenheit in some spots. Some spots look at that, 20, 21, now it's not negative 21, but 21 degrees below average. Even in the mountainous West Virginia, 23 below average, all right, 22 there on the Kentucky Tennessee border. So very cold air. They might think, okay, well, that's actually weird because. Um, that's just appearing like right here. And so why isn't it in Ohio Valley in the Northeast? Well, I'm glad you asked. Because if we go over to the precipitation map, you can see why. All right. Look at the colder air that starts to move in. Now, we're heading towards Friday morning now. We have a low developing in the south. We have some snow breaking out and some sleet and snow mixture for Kentucky, Tennessee, even West Virginia. Okay. This is a could be a classic Nor'easter setup or at least a coastal storm setup. And I honestly, with the colder air and all the models that I've been seeing, and November 5th, remember the Climate Prediction Center, what they showed? If I go back to this, I gotta find the map again. Uh, this one, right? The colder air they said was coming between November 6th and November 8th is when we can see those that really cold air come in, right? Well, we're in, we're in that time period, the 5th, the 6th, all right? And this is, I mean, this isn't just that heavy snow is not just in the mountainous areas. This is for some lower elevation areas, some sleet across uh, New York and New England. All right. And then look at this. Now, they did actually put an area of sleet over Philly and northern Jersey, like near New York City, excuse me. But uh, that's actually a glitch in the model because I actually went to the temperature graphic for Philadelphia and they said 43 degrees. It's very hard to have sleet when it's 43. So that's just a glitch in the model. But Philly... I'm not ruling out sleep for you, but for this sake of this model and the temperatures that they showed, that's just a glitch. Um, but in northern Pennsylvania, purple, that's definitely some sleet and heavy sleet at that. All right, and then it kind of, look what happens. Now it sinks closer to New York City, but northern Jersey, suburbs of New York City and Connecticut, very, very heavy sleet. And if sleet is very heavy, it, it can still accumulate like snow, but still cannot accumulate as fast as heavy snow would. All right, and snowfall accumulations for this, we're talking about one to two feet plus across the Appalachian chain in West Virginia, all right, not too far away from Allegheny County in Maryland, all right, even all the way down to central Tennessee in the, in the mountains there in North Carolina, all right, a few inches is definitely possible, a few inches of snow for Connecticut, Jersey, Pennsylvania, all right, and I am not ruling out a, I wouldn't say, I would, I'm not going to rule out a major snowstorm for the coastline of the Mid-Atlantic either. I don't think it's likely because, I mean, in all reality, it's still the beginning of November. If this was end of November, this would be a different story, all right? But the low is going to be right out too close to the shoreline to where I think the colder air will be over here. But I have seen, like for my local area, I've seen a downward trend in the temperature. Like like before, they were forecasting 39 degrees, uh, for example, uh, Friday night. Now they're saying 33. So I don't know. There could be some snow for the mid-Atlantic areas. Not ruling it out, but... Um, I'm going to say it's not likely for right now, but for areas just north and west and in, in those mountainous areas, then yeah, you could see a few inches of snow if the European plays out right. GFS, again, was sort of saying something similar, um, not to quite the magnitude of what the Euro was saying, but something over West Virginia or Virginia, all right, with those four to seven inches of snow is also possible. So very interesting pattern, very stormy up pattern that's going to be taking place especially combined with that cold air all the way through the middle of November. So we got a couple of weeks to watch to see what happens here. Thank you guys for watching today's video. I am the Weather Dude signing off. Till next time, I'll catch you guys in the next video.